Hello YouTube. Um, today we're going to be working on finding the max and min um, on a closed boundary for multivariable calculus. Um, so if you have this function here and you're bounded by a triangular region, uh, you'll have to find the max and min, absolute max and min on the, at that region. Um, so first you'll have to check the critical points, then check the corners, then check the edges. That's going to be our methods of approach. Um, in case you're curious what the function looks like, it looks like this. I believe it's called a paraboloid. It's like a 3D parabola. Um, and here you would have given information, which will probably be in green. You could find these points from the graph, and then you could calculate the equations uh, that represent the sides of the triangle. So you could find the slope and then the intercept. Um, and then calculate uh, the equations of the lines here. So this would be x equals 1, and this would be y equals negative 1. Okay. So, uh, to find the critical points, we first have to set the gradient equal to zero. Um, so first you have to find the partial derivative with respect to x and the partial derivative with respect to y. So let's do that. So if we look at our function here, the partial derivative with respect to x would be 2x um, plus y. And if we do it with respect to y, it would be x um, plus 2y. And remember you set that equal to zero. Um, so this is the gradient vector set equal to zero and then you solve for your critical points so for this top equation you solve for y um, and you can get y equals negative 2x and then you can plug this into this equation here to solve for x so why don't we do that um, you get x plus or x minus 2x which equals zero um, that would be, I believe, negative 3x equals 0, so x equals 0. Um, and then you plug that into your equation here, and you also get y equals 0. So your critical point is 0, 0. And sorry, this is kind of sloppy. My pen literally died, so I'm using my finger, and it's not as precise. Okay, so we found our critical point. Um, so now let's find if there are critical points along the edges and the corners. Uh, well, the corners, we'll just check if they're by, about, by looking at the values. But right now let's approach along y equals negative 1. So we're going to try to figure out if there's any critical points on that line there. So let's do that. So uh, simply and for the function, you just substitute wherever you see a y, you put a negative 1, and then now it's going to be a function of x. So then you'd have x squared... Um, the minus x plus 1. Uh, just to confirm, we're plugging it into this equation here. Um, and you just plug wherever you see y, you put in negative 1. Okay, if we want to find um, that crit the critical points, you can either, if you notice that this is a problem, you can calculate the vertex, or if you want to go the old-fashioned way or the calculus way, you take the derivative, so f prime um, would be 2x minus 1, and then you set that equal to 0, and then you would get x equal to 1 half. Um, that is your x value for the critical point. Then you plug it into this equation here. Or wait a minute, no, this is not an equation, you already have it there. Um, so that means your critical point along this axis, or this line, would be 1 half negative 1. Cool. Now, we're, let's do it along the x-axis. Um, okay, so not the x-axis, but where x is equal to 1. Again, that's where uh, we're just going along this line now and finding critical points. Remember, this is the paraboloids here, and it's coming up at you out of the page somehow. Um, and it's just resting on this region, so I guess it would be like a bunch of circles if you were looking at it this way. Um, so we're just trying to see what the critical points are along that area. So let's jump into it. So you, this would be a function of y now, and wherever you see an x in the original function you make it or you substitute 1 and you get 1 plus y plus y squared and then f prime of y prime equals 1 plus 2y and then you would get y equals negative 1 half because you're setting it equal to 0 um, and then you have your second um, point here so that would be 1 comma negative 1 half. Boom. 
Okay, but we still have one more. Um, we actually have to approach along the uh, sloped line here. So that's the equation y equals x plus 1. So let's do that. All right, so I substituted x plus 1 everywhere I saw y on the original equation, and this would be a function of x. Then you would take the derivative of that, um, and you would get, well, first, let's simplify this, actually. This would be 3x squared plus 3x plus 1. Um, and the derivative of that would be 6x plus 3. Set that equal to 0, solve for x, x equals uh, negative 3 over 6, which is negative 1 half. Okay, then you plug this into this equation here, um, and you would get y equals, well, x is negative 1 half plus 1 would be positive 1 half, so your coordinate would be negative 1 half comma 1 half. And that is your final point here. So now we have all these points. Uh, we have this point here, we have this point here, this point here, and this point here, but also we have these points. Those also count, because remember, um, you have to check your critical points, your corners, and your edges. It's kind of like um, from 1D calc, uh, it's like calculating your critical points, endpoints, and stuff like that. Um, okay, so. Now I'm going to make a table here. Okay, so what I did here is I listed all the possible candidates um, for a maximum and minimums, um, but we're looking for the absolute. Um, so this first one was the critical point we calculated by using the gradient. These are the values we use by approaching along the x, y, and the slope of that line, which was y equals x plus 1. Uh, that was for the triangular region. And these are the edges or the corners um, of that triangle. Those are the coordinates. Okay, so simply you take these coordinates and you plug them into your original function, which is here. Remember, it all go, always goes back to the original function. Um, then you plug in those values, and for 0, 0, you would get 0. For um, negative, well, we'll go down here. Negative 2, negative 1, you would get 7. For 1, negative 1, you would get 1. Um, and for 1, 2, you would get 7. Um, I believe these would come out to fractions. I believe this one's 3 fourths, or one of them's 3 fourths. Um, but short on time here, so I'm going to have to get going. But um, you can still, these values would be less than 7 or greater than um, 0. So you can determine that these values here are your extrema, and this would be your absolute min. And these two values here would be your absolute maxes. Um, and that's pretty much how you tackle this sort of problem. Good luck, guys.